Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. And today, oh, I've got a new antenna to check out here. This is an indoor HD antenna. I'm really kind of excited to try this thing out. So, uh, you know, the uh, HD stacker, which is an external, pretty large antenna, worked okay initially. And then as time went on, started to degradate. And now it's down to where it doesn't pick up anything. Uh, I made a review of that or a follow-up video of that not too long ago. And afterwards, I was contacted by a guy named Matthew at one by one bros.com and they uh they sent me this for free they wanted me to check it out now granted they and they they gave me this as just more out of curiosity they wanted to see what their indoor antenna amplified antenna would do in comparison to uh well the other indoor an or outdoor antenna i have that little 1999 powered antenna that's sitting up there in the antenna tower as well as the HD stacker. They were not expecting a miracle to occur, but they were curious because I do live in kind of a unique uh, area where there aren't a lot of signals and I do have a lot of mountains and stuff blocking the signal. So thanks to them, I appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing out of the box right now. We'll go ahead and set it up out here. I'll do a comparison. We'll do a channel scan with the outside antenna versus the inside antenna and uh, yeah, well, I'll give you my final review on it after that, okay? So let's see what we got here. Special offer here. Looks like they do give discounts. Cool. And we got a nice instruction manual here. Let's go ahead and look at that. 16 and a half feet of coax cable. That's nice. That's a lot. We got stickers to mount it. We also have screws, suction cups. I mean, there's a lot of ways to mount this thing. Antenna web. This is actually really cool. It's going to tell you. Go in there and see what kind of channels you're going to be able to get right off the bat. Huh. Interesting. Cool. So what it's using for power, it looks like, I can get this thing, yeah, is a regular USB. Very, a very good idea, actually, instead of having a separate power cable. So a lot of TVs now have USB ports um, in them for whatever reasons. So now you have the opportunity, you can plug it directly into the TV, directly into the TV, or you can still power it off of a regular wall work there. So in my case, it does, the TV I'll be using does not have a USB. So I'll just plug that into the wall and that into the TV. And then let's go ahead and open this up and see what we got here. This is the actual antenna itself. Looks like there's some accessories there too. So uh, here we are, threefold. Isn't that interesting? Kind of like that. I wonder if that's, uh, you know, I'll have to read the manual. I wonder if that's something you can angle. So we do have a way to mount it. We have screws. It also looks like we have a way with these foam. This is backing we could backing plate this thing and just stick it on there against the wall or a window it looks like yeah that's another adhesive for right there so i like the fact that they do offer several ways to mount this thing for right now i am not going to and i'm going to read the manual here and see what it says but my guess is it's going to tell you to uh, try in a few different places which makes perfect sense you know obviously where i am uh, location can be everything a window is going to be a better spot than an inside wall an outside wall is going to be a better spot than an inside wall Attic mounted, if you had enough room, I mean, 16 and a half feet of cable included here, that might be an idea too. You could pop a small hole in a closet or something like that and run the line through it. But anyway, let's go ahead and plug this thing in. I'll read the manual. And we'll give it a shot. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in here and do channel scan. And uh, we're going to see, this is the U-Link that I did a review on. This is the directional U-Link television antenna. It's sitting up about, I don't know, 18, 19 feet off the ground. And it's winter time, so reception is not as good as it was during the summer. But I'm going to go through and do a scan, and we'll see what kind of channels it finds. And then we will hook up the new antenna and see how it compares. The other thing I'm curious is, uh, maybe it finds 11 channels on the new antenna, but it finds different channels. One of the beauties of having an omnidirectional antenna versus a directional antenna is that, uh, well, you might pick up something that faces completely the opposite way. We'll, we'll see. All right, so we got 11. Of course, I'm going to have to blur it out now, but I'll go through those channels and find out what they are. So give me a second to do that. All right, let's see what channels we have here. Okay, so I've got it blurred out here so you can't see it uh, just for the copyright violations, even though I doubt there'd be an issue. But I do have a total of 11 channels. That is three subchannels. I've got uh, three actual transponders and a bunch of subchannels on each of those. All right, so now I'm going to stop the video. I will swap out the antenna for the new one. 
and I will uh, plug it back in and we'll run through the scan again. And I might try this two or three times to be fair because again, location, location is everything with these indoor antennas. So I'll give it a few different spots with that 16 and a half feet that I have there to play with. Cool. Okay, let's go here. All right, so this is in location one. I'm already seeing that that weird channel 44 is actually uh, back up and running, but let's go ahead and get back into the menu system and we'll do a channel scan and see what changes? One disadvantage this antenna may have is that this is a metal roof. And so that's probably not going to be helping it any when it comes to finding signals. All right, so we were down from 11 to nine channels. I'm gonna go ahead and blur the screen and I will run through those and see which transponder we lost and which ones we kept. So we have 68 all the way through Forty-four is back. Isn't that interesting? Forty-four, the channel that I've never gotten on any antenna until today, seems to be coming in great. It looks like it is a duplicate of uh, sixty-eight. If you can see the two differences there, the blur is the same blur. <laughs> Very interesting. So we lost channel eleven. I believe channel eleven is actually a VHF transponder in this area, but I'm not positive. Let me go ahead and move the antenna, and we will give this thing another shot. All right, so position two shows no channels found. Position two showing no channels. Let me go ahead and move this thing again. This time I'm gonna to try to get it as high off the ground as possible and we'll give it a shot. Okay, so I got an idea. So I've moved this thing around a few times and I can get those nine channels, or I'm sorry, eight channels, nine, yeah, nine channels that I got uh, the first position I had it in. But I'm not having much other luck here, and I have a real strong feeling that it has more to do with the conditions, the uh, the fact that this is under a metal roof, than it does the unit itself. So I'm going to move this inside, and we'll take another video of this inside the house, uh, comparing it to the main antenna. Now currently, I won't compare it to it, because the main antenna is not actually working at all. It was getting two channels, now it gets none. So we'll just go ahead and do a blind scan twice inside with uh, this hooked up in various places in the house and see if it uh, does any better or worse or about the same. Okay, so I moved it inside. This is a more conventional setup anyway. Probably should have started with this mess. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing if I can figure out. There we go, channel setup. Let's go ahead and we got channel and we're gonna go to search. And uh, there we go. Let's see what we can find. This is, uh, this is in a high location. Let's see what we come up with. So that's it. There is the end of our testing. I tested it out in the garage and was able to find that the unit performed pretty darn well. It picked up uh, nine subchannels outside and no matter where the location was, and I did try it in three different spots, the first location I tried it in actually turned out to be the best. Didn't have any artifacting on the uh, two transponders that I got or three transponders that I got out there. Wait, no, it was two transponders out there. Uh, with that antenna and they were channels 44 and 63 or 68 whichever one that is i think it was 68 and then inside the house at the uh, other tv set here putting it in three different locations and here got me two transponders as well but isn't it interesting to note that they were totally different transponders i got channels 11 and 39 35 whatever it was not bad. I like I like the, where it's set up in the house right now. I'm going to be leaving it there, so I want to thank Matthew for the antenna. This is going to work just great in here when I want to watch movies. There's a, the Charge channel that plays great movies here locally, so I'll be watching those on that for free. And that's awesome. I love uh, not having to pay for cable TV. If you're still paying for cable TV, there's, there's probably uh, no need for you to continue to do that, especially if you live close to an urban center, something I do not. Anyway, back to the radio or the antenna at hand. I got nothing but nice things to say. That it's interesting to note that uh, you know construction of your home, location of the transponders out there in or the transmitters out there in the world, and uh, and just so many variables in this world are going to get you the different quality signals. I've got a huge antenna that by any means should be picking up you know 20 or 30 stations, and it picks up nothing currently. Even at its best, it only picked up four transponders. With a $20 antenna off of Amazon, it's also an external antenna that's highly directional. With a little bit of finicking, I can get uh, three transponders. And with this indoor antenna, 
that uh, that I've been reviewing here today, I can get two. And or I bet you with some finicking around and messing around, I could probably get four. I just have to move it from place to place depending on what channels I want to receive. That's it. I am Eric, the owner of Farpoint Farms. I hope you enjoyed this video. A thanks, Matt, again for sending me this to review. It's been interesting. I planned on taking this down to my mother's house in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and trying it in a more urban setting. Unfortunately, the video footage that I took of that did not come out. It was on a cell phone, uh, my wife's cell phone, and she accidentally deleted the file. So maybe there'll be a part two sometime next time I get down there to see her again. I'll run through and check it in a couple places. But I have no doubt. Well, I can tell you right now, it did pick up 28 different stations, which was really cool. But uh, that's it for today, everybody. Enjoy it. And if you have any uh, questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And I'll see you next time. Take care. There's always something that needs a little fixing on Bar Point Farms. Freedom is mighty sweet. Liberty sows its seed at Bar